you assume that the foot of Cannon Street there on the far right will ultimately basically become part of the marina when the Cannon Street Pier gets expanded, everything in red, inside that red box that says CM, is the Chestertown Marina property. Probably most ominous is that big yellow blob right in the middle of it, which says FW. That is not owned by the town. That is owned by the Fish Whistle, which is basically a father and son uh, team of investors. And then SP, the pink area, and the dock, that is the property of Scotts Point. So when we had our charrettes, uh, we had one last May we had, uh, where we basically uh, outlined the issues that we needed to address. Some key elements that I want to point out right now, Bill, if you could point out that walkway in front of Scotts Point. First of all, I will say that our engineer misrepresented where that should have been drawn. It should have been drawn about 20 feet off of the land. There was actually an easement that was supposed to have gone through when this site plan was approved in 2005. That's why that walkway was on the original drawing of this marina. Uh, we talked about condensing the three piers and the Cannon Street Pier, those four piers into three piers, extending them out about 70 feet into deep water. Bill, if you can show how closely that downriver dock lines up with the property line delineating Scott's Point in Chestertown Marina. It's right on the edge. Keep that in mind. Also of importance is the fact that this area floods regularly. Anybody that goes down there knows this pretty well. The main area that the water comes in is just to the right of the Fish Whistle restaurant, kind of in that area. It also leaks in just above our marina store, right about there, Bill. Yeah, right in that area. It also comes up through our boat ramp. So what I've been saying from day one at these charrettes, at meetings with the fish whistle owners before I even took office is what ideally you would do in a perfect world is raise the entire area down at the foot of Cannon Street by two feet at least about to the height of the Cannon Street Pier where Sultana is birth that really I've only ever seen underwater when we have a Hurricane Sandy or some other hundred year event that we seem to get every ten years now. <laughs> um, so. Having said all that, we were encouraged by MDE. Um, so we initially went to MDE and said, how do you want us to do this? Should we put in a permit for dredging and a different permit for docks, different permit for bulkheads and different permit for the walkway? And they said, no, we would prefer if you send us one permit for everything. I'm not sure why they said that. I think they thought it was gonna streamline their job, but I can tell you it's made our job pretty tough. Because anybody that has any objection to any part of this can call a public hearing about this project and basically come and voice their concerns. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. The residents on either side of this property had a lot of concerns. Scott's Point residents had a lot of concerns that I will enunciate for you in a minute. And the owners of the fish whistle had concerns. So let's start with Scott's Point. Their number one objection is the walkway in front of their units. At the end of the day, if we're being honest, they just don't want a walkway in front of their water views. They don't want the foot traffic. They're worried about noise. They're worried about safety. They're <coughs> worried about trash. It goes on and on, but they are unanimously and adamantly opposed to that walkway going in. They've made legal arguments about their riparian rights. <coughs> it runs deep, and that has definitely caught the attention of MDE. Uh, they had questions about if we dredge out the marina basin, how is that going to affect their basin? I can tell you for a fact that their basin is every bit as shallow as our basin, if not shallower. They're concerned that when we dredge out our basin, the loose sediments will float into their basin and make their basin even shallower. Um, they were concerned about the alignment of the pier closest to their property line. So if you could show that pier again, Bill. Yeah. We show boats on the outside there. Those each, represent, each of those rectangles represents a boat. They had concerns that if those were full, it would create problems for them coming on and off of their docks, which I could see. I could see that. They also felt that the dock kind of goes just ever so slightly at an angle towards their property line. And if there were boats on the outermost edge, they might actually be crossing their property line. 
Number four, oh, I, just, I just alluded to that. And lastly, they made mention of this kayak launch that we show right there. Basically, anything that happens near them, they're not really excited about. I'll just put it that way. I'm caught, well, let me continue. So when we talked about pedestrian flow at the charrette, this is what we have right now. So you can see by the boat ramp bill, there's kind of that jog that ends. When Scouts Point was approved by the Planning Commission in 2005, we had talked about with the developers putting that in there. And here is copy from the minutes. On the bottom it says, Mr. Williamson moved to approve the final site plan with the following conditions. The boardwalk not be constructed, but be a part of the recorded plat and constructed at the time the adjoining neighbors could connect at the owner's expense. So in other words, the idea was when the marina gets rehabilitated, that boardwalk should go in. Now, as far as I know, that was never followed through on the owner's side. Um, I think there's, because of that, I think it was probably a mistake on our part. We probably should have had them, if we really wanted that walkway, we should have had them build it before there were residents in those condos, because I always knew as soon as those things were occupied and they learned about that boardwalk, that was going to be a full bonus so contention. Is the easement not reflected in their deeds? It's, all, it's on the plans for the project, all the, uh, the, the ones that were approved, the engineer plans. This recordation, though, was not done at the courthouse by the developer. So it's not in their deeds of their properties? It's, I don't know about in their deeds for the property. That's a good question. I get the sense that when these guys bought these condos, I don't think most of them were aware that this easement existed. And so when they found out about it, I mean, you can imagine how you would react. So it's not particularly surprising. So uh, again, this is the plan that we had McCrone draw up, kind of showing that waterfront walk with the new boardwalk. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that we probably, in the short term, and maybe forever, remove that walkway from this plan, because I think that has the potential if they really wanted to go to the mat for this, they could really tie this up on the permitting level indefinitely. And to be honest, it would be really nice, I think, still think that that would be a really nice addition, but we can reroute traffic to go a different way. Uh, and frankly, we have really pressing infrastructure needs that need to be dealt with as soon as we can get to them. And if we hold that permit up fighting for that walkway, I think it's gonna be detrimental for the whole project. Um, so that's a big issue. I'm also cautiously optimistic that if we do go with removing this walkway from the plat, that the residents of Scotts Point will be really happy to work with us to resolve the other issues that I think are all very doable and we can do them quickly. Uh, we also, in our new plan, have considered not showing those boats on the down river side. There's only five spots there. I don't think those would be desirable spots anyway. I think if we had a big event, maybe like a down rigging or a tea party where we're full, we could maybe use that as overflow and maybe we might work something out with Scott's point where, hey, maybe on down rigging and tea party only, would you be willing to let five boats come in there if needed on an overflow basis? And I think they'd probably be amenable to that. Okay, fish whistle. To me, this is a more onerous and trickier problem. Um, the weirs, as I said, they own that big yellow blob right in the middle of the marina. And I've been saying from the very beginning, I think in the ideal world for a 30 year fix, we, we raise the bulkheads, however many feet it takes to get it to the level of the Canistry Pier. However, if we raise the bulkheads and fill the area around the bulkheads and the fish whistle owners don't simultaneously raise the grade of their parking lot, which would be below the bulkheads, we would essentially have built a dam around their restaurant so that if we ever did get a tropical event that came over the bulkhead, we basically created a duck pond where the fish whistle is. So um, <clears throat> this is a direct quote from their letter. Until we are able to examine the proposed height of the bulkhead, we are not able to determine potential effects of their proposed improvements. This will have a dramatically negative impact on our land and property. Um, so what we've told them, and me and Case met with Matt and Tony Weir, the owners, we said, look, here's three options and you need to tell us what you'd prefer. To us, the preferred option is to raise the grade of everything 
at once. However, I have told them several times, I can't get a grant as a public entity and give you money so that the taxpayers are paying for you to raise the grade of a private parking lot at a private for-profit restaurant. So if we go with that plan, you're gonna need to pay for the improvements on your property. Are you guys willing to do that? We did finally give them a price estimate of what we think it might cost them to pay for fill, regrade their parking areas, and it, was, it wasn't cheap, it was about $100,000. So they need to decide, are we gonna invest in the 30-year fix, or are we happy to keep getting our rent check and making a profit on this investment, but maybe not addressing long-term issues and just kind of punting that down the road? Uh, another option is we could raise the grade of the bulkheads and create a walkway that's the same height and not raise the grade of the fish whistle at all, but create an engineering solution so that if there was a breach of the bulkheads, there might be one-way valves that would allow floodwaters to drain under and through the bulkheads. So that's kind of the middle of the road. And thirdly, we could just replace the bulkheads at the exact same height and build a big raised boardwalk that keeps everybody's feet dry as they walk around the perimeter. The flooding problems would still continue unabated, but at least our pedestrians and our boat renters and our slip rentals could at least get off their boat and get to the high ground without walking through shin deep water. Those are the three options on the table right now. To be honest, this is the problem that, th that I think is going to be much more difficult to solve because it involves real investment and real money and pretty important financial decisions. But once again, you can see how if we were to raise the bulkhead all around that restaurant and if they don't come up with us, it's going to be an issue. So that's kind of where we are now. Um, here's the deal. We are ready to go and start working on this this winter. And I've been telling all these guys, we would like to do something this winter. We have a $200,000 grant and $192,000 from the Washington College Armory purchase. So we have almost 400 grand ready to go. We could fix the bulkhead around the fish whistle, or we could just run one dock out, or we could put in the new boat ramp. And I think what's gonna end up happening is whichever set of neighbors comes to the table first with their solution is probably where we're gonna allocate that money because we just gotta